All right, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, J4K and this session on Landscape of Eclipse Microprofile Tools. We are del delighted to be here to talk to you all today. I'm YK and my co-presenter is Catherine. Um, we are both from IBM. So we'll just briefly introduce ourselves first, right? Uh, you can reach us at the, uh, the Twitter IDs there, right? So um, I'm YK, I, obviously I work with, uh, um, we work for IBM and um, I work on the OpenWD project. I am a developer advocate and also uh, I, I, I focus on developer experience for OpenWD tool. Catherine, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So, hi, I'm Catherine. Uh, I also work on the Open Liberty project with YK, as well as some of the microprofile tools as a developer at IBM. All right. So, yeah, we'll be uh, happy to connect with you after this session and or just uh, reach out to us. All right. So, what uh, we mentioned Open Liberty, that's one of the projects that we work on. Uh, if you have not heard of it, Open Liberty is an open source uh, project from IBM. Um, it's um, our lightweight runtime and framework for building uh, cloud native Java applications, right? You can check it out at openlibby.io. Everything is open source there. We would love uh, to hear from you after you've tried things out. Yeah, so that's just a bit of an... And uh, what we want to talk to you all today is regarding uh, tools and tools available for Eclipse MicroProfile, right? Uh, so um, it's a survey of uh, what's out there, right? So it's sort of a survey of the landscape of Eclipse MicroProfile tool. This is our first uh, time doing this talk. And, um, and, and so we call it uh, the September 2020 edition. Hopefully um, we'll get to do it, uh, provide updates down the road, and then we'll be able to uh, do this uh, regularly going forward and see what's uh, out there that will, is available to developers, right? So. All right, so our plan for today is that we'll first uh, quickly do a quick uh, review, if not an intro into uh, Eclipse MicroProfile, especially if you are not familiar with it, right? Um, and after that, we'll dive into the tools that are available for developers, uh, for all of us as developers to work with uh, Eclipse MicroProfile. After that, we will, uh, Catherine will do a demo of uh, the tools and then uh, we'll all right, so MicroProfile. Eclipse MicroProfile is a project under the Eclipse uh, Foundation, right? It's an open collaborative effort to looking at uh, creating a set of uh, cloud native Java APIs, obviously for Java, for, for us, Java developers to build cloud native applications, right? So, so um, many members of the community and then different uh, companies are involved there. Uh, you can find out more at uh, microprofile.io. In terms of what's available, if you will look at the set of APIs there, right? So there's a core set of APIs around uh, building uh, REST services, right? So some of the APIs are actually uh, from um, Jakarta EE or Java EE um, project, right? But uh, there's a core set of APIs for us to build uh, RESTful services. And then also uh, some additions like uh, MicroProfile Config to help with externalizing configuration and MicroProfile REST client to make it easier for us to build uh, REST clients in a, in a type safe manner, right? On top of the core set of APIs, there's also uh, APIs for us to work with other or integrate with other services or other technologies. So for instance, uh, open API spec to for us to uh, easily generate or, or, or write uh, documentation for our REST for services or, or you think like fault tolerance and, and JWT APIs to, to, to de deal with uh, problems and, and, and from a security standpoint. Now, some of these uh, APIs are newer ones like the GraphQL or reactive messaging ones. Uh, these um, new APIs that uh, give us uh, APIs to build uh, GraphQL applications and uh, reactive applications. Besides in the set of APIs for us to work with other services, there's also uh, APIs for observability, right? Integrating into say a cloud native environment, whether it's with containers uh, on Kubernetes, right? Or, or others, right? We need some APIs for our applications to make it easier, for instance, for us to self-report uh, how we are doing through health checks and then and for uh, making available metrics data and things like that right so these would be the set of apis from open telemetry which is the latest efforts to uh, open tracing help check and metrics for us to uh, um, ensure that we have be able to observe what our applications are doing so that's the the, the a quick review of the the set of apis available um, from a micro profile it's really for us to build uh, cloud native agile applications and using a, an open set of apis all right, so to go with the APIs, uh, different uh, 
companies have implemented or different groups have provided different implementations for the APIs, right? Here's a list of the runtimes available that's listed uh, up on Eclipse Wiki that's been, uh, that, that, that have uh, passed uh, TCKs that are compatible with uh, version two and three of the MicroProfile APIs. So as you can see, there's a quite uh, significant list here from Wildfly, Cumulux to Open Liberty, WebShare Liberty, Thorntail, Pyra, JBoss, Quarkus, Teladon, and uh, Tommy, right? There is a lot of choices available. Um, you build with MicroProfile and then you're free to choose what you think as your best choice of uh, runtimes. All right, so what does it mean to developers and, and what's there for developers for us to use and, and for us to work with to build MicroProfile um, applications or applications using MicroProfile APIs, right? So as a developer, typically what we do is that we will create or start a new project, right? We'll be uh, adding some code after and making changes to our code, editing, and then building up, uh, building the changes, compiling them, packaging them, and pushing things out so we can test, and including writing test code and um, ourselves writing more tests, and then we repeat the cycle. And we don't, and we do this with the help of an editor or an ID, right? Typically, we work with them to do so, and it'll be nice as we code, right? There will be a system available to make life easier for developers, right? So that's that's what we are keen on from a developer standpoint. How do how, how can development be, be uh, made easier and what are the tools available to help uh, with our job, right? So if we want to uh, put a framework or model around it in terms of looking at uh, how we do things and what's available, right? We, we have a model here um, from, from, from starting to, to testing, right? So we would just, you can imagine you would go through, create, uh, build, and edit, and a test cycle. And what we call here is a um, iterative development cycle. Different people have different names for it, right? Uh, like in the loop development and things like that. But, but here for the sake of simplicity, we'll just refer to it as an iterative development cycle. We'll use this, this model where you go through a create, build, edit, and test um, process you know, to look at what are the tools available for us to uh, work with MicroProfile, right? And then and you can say that some of these steps may be ahead of, you may start um, uh, maybe in a different order, right? But but we won't go get go into those arguments here today. And um, oh, another thing, as I mentioned, we don't work in a vacuum. So we'll be working with an editor or an IDE. So we'll take a look at uh, what's there in context of uh, um, an ID and editor too. So let's get going with um, the first um, step in the process, right? Can, how can I get a starter project or template as I get going with building my application with MicroProfile? What's available, right? There are starters available and the, the common one or the general one is the MicroProfile starter project uh, from the MicroProfile community itself, right? So you can get to it at start.microprofile.io. Um, that's a website that's available and then also so you can get it through as an extension or a plugin for VS Code and IntelliJ. What does it do is that uh, it asks you to give it, give it a few inputs, right? Um, and then the, like MicroProfile, version of the MicroProfile ver API that you want to use, the Java version that you want to work with, and your choice of the MicroProfile runtime will give you back a zip of a starter project that you can then uh, explode locally and then pull into your editor or IDE to work with and then give you some sample code and, and the and the starting um, build configuration, right? And besides the micro profile starter, um, we know we have different runtimes out there have their own starters or generators technologies too that you can use and including um, quick start templates that you can work with as a starting point for your micro profile application. So that's what we have um, to get going with building a micro profile application. Then after obviously we create it or we start new, then we need to build our apps or build our code, right? So, and, and have them development cycle. So there are built plugins that we are all familiar with available for us to work with um, the different microprofile runtimes, right? Typically they are available for Maven or Gradle, right? These plugins would give you a set of common tasks or goals for you to uh, helped you with uh, managing and work and your application on top of the runtime as Part of your build life, your build life cycle. We have a few examples here, right? From as you can see, the top one there on is uh, is uh, the the Gradle plugin for Open Liberty, Open Liberty, and then um, then the second one is the Quarkus Maven plugin, and then as you can see, there are more other um, 
build plugins available from say Para and, and Tommy and, and so on, right? So, so that's what's out there to help us with building our applications on the runtime of our choice. And besides that, a common problem, I guess a pain point in a sense, if you want to put it that way, is that, um, is that it's pretty difficult or, or just tedious if we have to do things manually as we make iterative changes to our code, right? For us to recompile ourselves, to push things out, and then to restart the uh, runtime and things like that. What if we don't have to do that manually during development? Is there any capabilities available to, to, to make life easier for developers? Yes, there is some um, um, different, they're they called, they're labeled differently. Some people call it hot deploy or auto deploy or death mode, but the, the idea is these capabilities, essentially what they attempt to do is to uh, s simplify and automate um, these things that developers may have to do. So imagine that you have made some changes to your code, you saved it, then uh, with uh, death mode or hot deploy or auto deploy capability, the changes will be pick up, pick up automatically, it will be then, uh, push out and, and then your server will be refreshed, your runtime will be refreshed and changes can be live, you can immediately test. That would save angst and actually improve um, life for developers, right? So these are, there are a set of capabilities available uh, for the different runtimes, right? Some of them are optimized for particular runtimes and some of them are generic, uh, more generic capabilities available through the IDEs and they're also third party tools like, for instance, the watch and deploy to by Adam Bean that's available for developers to use. All right, so, so, so that's um, these things here to help us to build and, um, and, and actually uh, iterative make change, iteratively make changes to our applications. And what about working inside an IDE, right? So we, we work within an editor or in an IDE. Yes, there are systems available. Um, across the, all the different IDEs out there, um, Eclipse, IntelliJ, VS Code, NetBeans, right? And, and, and even others. And so there's integration with the IDEs typically uh, to help you work with the runtime of your choice. And then there are also certain runtimes who will have their own plugins for you to work, for instance, either in VS Code, Eclipse, or, or IntelliJ. So these are, there are options out there and, and there's certainly editor integration. Then as we work with uh, inside an editor or an ID, typically you, we know, right? Um, if we make mistakes, uh, things may be highlighted or, or, um, or if there are problems, they may suggest quick fixes or, or even autocomplete as we uh, code, right? Are there, is there any assistant available for MicroProfile? Yes, there is. Um, this is a re relatively recent effort, right? So there is actually currently now, and incubator project under Eclipse Foundation to build a language server for Eclipse MicroProfile. And alongside that, Red Hat is also, um, and Co, uh, because everything here is open source, right? Uh, um, there's also a, a companion uh, VS Code extension for that language server that you, that, um, that's being developed, right? So um, anyone is, uh, and everyone is welcome to participate. Um, it's an uh, Eclipse Foundation project, right? And it's open source, so, so feel free to, um, jump in and, and help out if you have, if you're interested, right? But basically here, what uh, through the language server, using the language server protocol, the, the aim here is to provide things like uh, as you work with a microprofile annotations or, or, or the APIs there that, that, that there will be autocomplete, there will be diagnostics, and then uh, there will be fixes if you make mistakes that, that helps, makes life easier for a developer. So that's a language server for microprofile. What more? What more is there to help us to code, right? And there are things like uh, some code generators out there. Um, an example is um, a microprofile REST client generator um, to help us uh, generate some temp the, the, the REST client template interface from open API docs, right? So um, it's in uh, open API tools. You can check it out at open API tool. There's the command line assistant and there's also a VS code extension for that. Open API tools that also provides uh, capabilities for us to generate Ajax RS service stops, right? So, so these would help us um, do a bit more for us to make life uh, uh, easier. And, and so we don't have to write as much code, especially if, um, for instance, for REST service, uh, if it would be nice if you already have the uh, Open API doc, then things can be generated automatically, right? So, so that's that. And then as an aside or an honorable mention, there's the extensions for MicroProfile Project 2. It's open source, you can check it out. It provides additional uh, 
samples or like, um, like things that to help us work with different micro profile APIs um, from exception handling to, uh, to others. So you can take a look at that as well. That's out there on GitHub. All right, so, so now that we have be, we are working with our code, making changes, editing in, uh, in our IDEs of choice. So what's next? Obviously last but certainly not least and very important is testing and automated testing, right? So what's available? Well, the usual suspects are there, right? There is uh, GUnit and Aquilin and another, any other frameworks that you're familiar with, right? For us to profile and, um, um, and you can use those. Is there anything more? Yeah, so certain run certain runtimes like Quarkus and Tommy, they have done. Uh, um, they they have their own testing facilities for you to work with uh, Quarkus applications or applications that you have built to run on Tommy too. So, so th those will help. And then the latest development would be around um, using containers to help with integration testing or even getting true to production testing going on in development. Right. So, um, the the, the Test containers is a as an example of that uh, such a project, especially for Java applications for Java developers, right? So the idea here is that using containers, we can easily get dependencies that we need uh, up and available, so we can then uh, write uh, tests easily to test with those dependencies, right? As long as there's a container image available that can be brought up and then that can be made available, and that's what we can use from our automated tests. And building on top of that is micro shared testing. So micro shared testing uh, built on top of test containers and it offers additional optimizations and integrations for micro profile applications um, and also Jakarta EE applications, right? Uh, for the runtimes that, that support um, micro profile or Jakarta EE. So micro shared testing offer more on top of test containers to give us the ability even in development, we could bring up dependency that's uh, true to production, especially we are using production ready images, right? Whether it's for our application that we want to test that we're developing or our dependencies to go with that. So then right away within development environment, uh, I can have tests that are true to production integrations tests that um, going that's not only easy to write, but also uh, give us the kind of quality checks that we need. So check it out at microshed.github.io. It's another open uh, source project as well. All right, so that's a quick view or survey through the um, uh, what's out there and the landscape of micro profile tools. Now we'll switch over to Catherine and Catherine will show us a few demos of uh, these tools in action. Thanks YK. So now I'm just going to demo you through some of the micro profile tools as YK said um, and show you the tooling available. Specifically, we're going to go through VS Code and IntelliJ. So here I am in VS Code, and I just want to point out that there does exist the MicroProfile extension pack in VS Code, which actually bundles together um, MicroProfile related extensions, such as MicroProfile Starter, the REST client generator, as well as some runtime specific tooling. So you can see there's Open Liberty tools, Quarkus tools, as well as Payera tools. So you can get quite a bit of support in VS Code. Um, so let's start with the beginning of the development lifecycle, which is creating a project. So I'm going to create a new micro profile project with the micro profile starter. And you can specify the group ID. And today I'm going to start with a Quarkus project. So here I'm just picking a micro profile version and you can see here are the supported runtimes for that micro profile version. So I'll pick Quarkus. And then here are um, the possible micro profile specs that you can add to your application. For now, I'm just gonna create a really basic application, so I'm not gonna choose any specs. And I will just generate that into a folder and add it to my workspace. So here you can see our Quarkus application. Um, if I open it up, you'll see it's just a really simple application. Um, it has just a hello world endpoint. And if we take a look at the palm here, you can see we have the Quarkus plugin configured um, and just a very simple dependency. So let's say we actually want to add in a few more micro profile specs to our project. We can click Quarkus add extensions to our project. Um, for this demo, I'm going to show adding a REST client as well as micro profile open API. So here you can see it's actually adding those to our project. And if we look at our palm, 
those two dependencies have now been added, the REST client and um, OpenAPI. So now I'm going to start up Quarkus in development mode. So I'm gonna click Quarkus debug current Quarkus project. And what this does is start up Quarkus dev mode um, for hot deployment, as well as it attaches to the VS Code debugger. So here you can see we've attached to the debugger if you would like to step through your code um, and our project has launched. So I can actually access our project endpoint. Um, and here is our sample project. It's just really basic project with our hello world endpoint. And we can actually test out the hot deployment. So if I make a source file change, access our endpoint, you can see um, it's updated with the server still running. And Quarkus Tools also has additional support um, for code completion, language features, as YK was mentioning. So you can see here, we can add some Quarkus snippets or we can add some um, micro profile specific annotations. If we take a look at our application.properties file, we can also add some micro profile specific um, properties and some Quarkus specific properties. Here is some autocomplete to help you configure your project. So now let's actually create uh, two projects that connect to each other through a REST client REST service. Um, so for our Quarkus project here, we're going to use it as our service. So I'm gonna create a new service controller class. Here. And just going to bring over um, code. And here you can see I've just created a simple service class uh, it's accessible at dash service and it has one method do something that accepts a parameter and will return that parameter. So let's try accessing that endpoint now. So there you can see I've passed J4K and it just returns J4K. So now let's create a new project and actually hook it up um, through the REST client interface. So as you remember, I have OpenAPI configured for this Quarkus project, and we can access that at the OpenAPI endpoint. Here we have our OpenAPI YAML file for this project, and you can see it uh, details the two endpoints we have available right now. So now I'm going to create a new project with the microprofile starter. Um, and this time it will be a Liberty project. So I'm gonna pick Open Liberty as my server and I'll add some microprofile specs to this project. Uh, metrics, health checks, opening API, and add it to our workspace. So now let's take a look at this new project. You can see we have our Hello World endpoint um, as with our past application. But we also have these config, health, and metric folders um, that have some template code for the micro profile specs that we um, chose. So here you can see we have some health checks as well as a metric controller. And since we have Open Liberty tools for VS Code enabled, if we go to the Liberty Dev dashboard, we can see our new project has shown up. We can actually start up uh, Liberty Dev mode from the dashboard. And here you can see it's actually going to deploy um, in Dev mode. So it's just installing the micro profile features. On the Liberty Dev dashboard, if you right click on the project name, you can see we also have other commands available for you, such as stopping, running tests, and viewing test reports. So now you can see our web application is available. So I'm going to go to port 9080, the default for Open Liberty. And here you can see we have our new project um, with a few more uh, endpoints because we have config, health, metrics, and Open API configured now. So we can check out our health endpoint. This will show us when our system it's up and running. Uh, we can also look at the metrics page that has some detailed metrics on our application. Um, so just like with the Quarkus project, we have um, hot deployment. 
So if we access our health endpoint here, we see it says hello world. We can make a source file change. Upon saving, you'll see that our source compilation, our source has been recompiled. And if I refresh my endpoint, we should see that change reflected at the endpoint. So right there. And you can just keep the server running and keep uh, developing your application. So now let's connect uh, to our REST server from our Quarkus application. So the first thing we want to do is generate a REST client interface. So we can use this generate a microprofile REST client uh, VS Code extension. And this will accept our open API file from our Quarkus project. And can confirm. And here you'll see we've actually generated our REST client interface. So if we take a look here, it's um, a default API that has our two endpoints from our Quarkus application, our hello endpoint and our parameter application. So we just have to make a few changes to this application by adding in our base URI from our Quarkus application. So if I go back to our Quarkus application at port 8080 and just link that to our Open Liberty application. So now we have our REST client interface. We just have to create our controller. So I'm going to create our client controller class and just copy over. So what this class is doing is um, it's just creating a new endpoint at client slash parameter. And here you can see we've injected our REST client, our default API. And when we access the dash parameter endpoint on our Open Liberty application, we're actually accessing the endpoint from the Quarkus application. So let's go ahead and try that out. So if I go to our Open Liberty application, and go to our endpoint. So here we are, and it's fully connected to our Quarkus application. So that was just a quick way to create uh, two projects, two different runtimes, and they can communicate through MicroProfile REST client. So I'm just going to stop both of our servers. You can stop through the dashboard. Um, or directly through the terminal in VS Code. And we can do all of our work from within VS Code. So now I'm going to pivot over to um, IntelliJ to show you some of the extensions and plugins we have available there and the supported tools. So here is IntelliJ. If I go to new project, I have the micro profile starter extension installed for IntelliJ as well. As you can see, you can configure a new project the same way we did in VS Code. Um, for completeness, I'm going to open up our Quarkus application that we were just looking at in VS Code and show you that here in uh, IntelliJ, we have the same sort of support that we had in VS Code with uh, code completion, suggestions. You can see it will auto complete some snippets for you as well as some micro profile properties and Quarkus specific properties. If I open up our Open Liberty application, so here's our application. You'll see here on the right now we have the Liberty Dev dashboard, um, same thing as in VS Code, and we can see all of the available commands we can run. So if I hit start, it will launch dev mode again. Um, it works with the integrated terminal in IntelliJ. So again, you can do all of your work from in, within IntelliJ. And our application is available. We can just verify that by um, going to our homepage. And again, if I access our hello world endpoint, you can see we can make a code change when we save, it is recompiling our source code. And when we access our endpoint again, we should see that change reflected. So I'm 
I'm going to stop our Open Liberty server. And now I'm going to show you a sample project in Payera. So this project is with Payera Micro, and I'm just going to show you, again, it has a simple Hello World endpoint, um, how without even needing an external IntelliJ extension, you can add hot deployment support for your Payera application um, from within IntelliJ. So if we take a look at the Palm here, uh, I've added an additional profile called Reload, and I've just added two plugins um, that will help us with hot deployment for our Payera server. So whenever we make a code source change, uh, we don't have to redeploy our server. We can just um, run a Maven package command and it will update as needed. So here you can see um, I've just configured a run configuration for Payera so that we don't have to type in the command each time. Um, and that's just executing within the run console of IntelliJ. So we'll just wait for the application to start up. Here you can see we have our URL and the endpoints that are available to us. Just gonna copy the URL over and access our hello endpoint. So we can make a change, save, and then all we have to do is run maven package dash p reload. And with our server still running, it repackages our application and we can see our changes are picked up. So we can support hot deployment in Payera as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop our Payera application and show you the last step in the development's life cycle, which is testing. So as YK mentioned, um, Microshed testing is available for micro profile applications. And what this does is it allows you to write your integration tests in Java or Jakarta EE for your micro profile applications um, and lets you run those integration tests within a container. So here you can see, I've just added this Microshed testing dependency uh, as well as a JUnit dependency. And this application is very simple. It's just a person service um, with a few get person, create person commands, and a person is just comprised, comprised of a name and an age. So let's go ahead and try to write an integration test using Microshed. So the first thing we want to do is annotate our test with this Microshed annotation, and then actually create our container. So here is how you specify a container in Microshed. We use this application container um, object as well as this container annotation that comes from test containers. And this is just verifying that our application is ready to go up and running. And then the next step we want to do is create our REST client service. So we're gonna use the REST client annotation and create an instance of our person service. And what this is gonna do is inject a REST client proxy of our person service, and we can easily invoke HTTP requests to our container uh, using this. So now we can just go ahead and write our first test, and we'll call it test create person, and we'll try to create a person using our person service. And we'll just verify that they've been created. And so we can actually run this from within IntelliJ. And what this is doing is spinning up a Docker container and running this test in your Docker container. And that's really useful because oftentimes in production, you're running your application in a Docker container. So it makes sense to want your integration test to be as close to production as possible. So here you can see our test has passed and our Docker container uh, started up. So that's a really simple overview of Microshed testing. I encourage you to check it out yourself. And with that, we finish off the development lifecycle and I'll pass it back to YK. All right, thanks. Thanks, Catherine. So 
Yeah, that was a demo of some of the tools available for micro profile, right? As you can see from creating a, a project uh, and then to making changes within IDs or different IDs and then working with your runtimes to uh, testing uh, uh, using MicroShare testing. So yeah, there are, there are different tools available and it's a healthy set of tools available for us to work with uh, micro profile APIs to use them to build uh, cloud native Java applications, right? So to to, to sum up, right, if you will take a look at uh, what we have, right, in summary across the board, right, from uh, from uh, create to edit to build uh, to build edit and then test, right. So there's certainly a common set of tools that's uh, generally available for micro profile, right, from the micro profile starter and, and to its associated ID extensions or plugin to uh, the language server to help with making code changes um, uh, ch uh, using micro profile APIs, right and to uh, open API tools to generate code from uh, open API docs and, and, and even including testing. So there's a general set of tools available for us to uh, build with MicroProfile. And at the same time, there are also a set of runtime specific tools specific to the uh, different runtimes that support MicroProfile for us to like, make life easier and, and uh, better for developers to, to build uh, these applications with the different runtimes, right? So, so this is a summary view. And then if we we'll dive into um, things from an editor or ID integration standpoint, as you can see across the different IDEs from Eclipse to IntelliJ and NetBeans and VS Code, there, um, uh, and uh, across the different runtimes, uh, there, there are facilities available for us to work with our choice of runtimes in our choice of editors to work with MicroProfile to build on um, the kinds of applications that we need to build, right? So obviously there's the common integration and then different runtimes have also go or go further and provide their own uh, set of tools to for you to for us to work with uh, in the with and inside the different editors or IDE. So, so there is a healthy set of things available, and and, and it certainly helps to make our life easier as developers with these things available. All right, so that's all we want to share with you, you all. Right uh, to sum up as we um, wrap things up. Right. We feel that it's really certainly exciting times to work with cloud native Java to use uh, cloud native Java APIs like MicroProfile to build uh, applications um, today, right? So it's a lot of things are happening. There's exciting developments, and we certainly expect there'll be more tools coming down the road uh, and better tools coming down the road for, for us to work with Eclipse MicroProfile and then and even better capabilities available, right? So it's 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 great to see what we have and then we're excited uh, about what, what will come next, right? So um, yeah, so let us know what you think of what we have shown and what, what we've managed to capture or, 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 or summarize, right? Uh, as a sort of a review of what's out there and the survey of the landscape. Um, we might have probably have missed something because we we um, we can't cover the world in a sense, right? So if you have you know we've missed something, and we have we'd be love to hear from you. Let us know or, and get your thoughts on what you think that uh, share with you all here today, right? And um, if you have any ideas or even thoughts on what's missing or what more should be built, don't hesitate to share with the community, right? So uh, just join the micro profile. Uh, the mailing list, the community there, and just ask a question or, or just reach out to us, uh, to Catherine or myself or, on Twitter or, or other or our social media. We'll be happy to talk to you and I'll appreciate your feedback, right? So, so thank you for your time here and I hope you have fun building with MicroProfile. Thanks.